we are focusing on infinite limits. And in the last video, we learned how to do it when we were given graphs or visuals. And we know that as x is approaching positive infinity, we just look at the right-hand side of the graph. And as x is approaching negative infinity, we just look at the left-hand side of the graph. But what happens if it doesn't give us a graph or a visual? What happens if it gives us a function? And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's look at our steps. And in my steps, the very first thing I have for you is what not to do. If you go back to finite limits, if you are looking at an example like x is approaching 2, your very first step was to plug in the number 2. That is actually completely opposite of what we're going to do at infinite limits. If we're looking at x is approaching positive infinity or x is approaching negative infinity, your first instinct might be to plug in positive infinity or negative infinity. Well, if there's only one x in that function, then that will work out. But if there is more than one x in that function, it doesn't work out because there's so many infinities floating about, it's hard to tell which infinity is going to be the final answer. Or do they cancel or what actually is happening here? So what you do not do is plug in infinity or negative infinity because if there's more than one, it's hard to tell what's really happening there. So what you do focus on is what we did in the last video. We focus on the graphs of the polynomials. You focus on the visuals. Now this textbook is nice because we're only going to be doing infinite limits of polynomial or rational functions. And you should know the end behavior of all polynomials and all rational functions because that is what we just did in the last set of material. We graph polynomials and we graph rational functions. So if you can come up with their graphs or their visuals, then you just focus on the right-hand side of the graph if you're looking at positive infinity or the left-hand side of the graph if you're looking at negative infinity. In this video, we're going to start by looking at the polynomial functions. What is their exact end behavior? So let's review the end behavior of a polynomial function. It's all summarized by this chart by here, but we know that we do it by looking at the leading term test. The leading term is the term with the highest degree or the highest exponent. We look at that degree, and that tells us one set of information. Is it even or odd? We also look at the coefficient, the number in front of that term, and we figure out whether it's positive or negative. When we pair up that two set of data points, that's going to give us the end behavior of our graph. If we can come up with this image right here, then we can come up with our infinite limit. So let's do an example of finding an infinite limit of a polynomial function. 1 plus 2x squared minus 3x to the fourth. And I want to figure out as x is approaching positive infinity, the right-hand side of the graph, and x is approaching negative infinity, the left-hand side of the graph. So what we do is we pick out the leading term. Again, that's the term with the highest degree. So that is this guy right here, negative 3x to the fourth. And we figure out, is our coefficient positive or negative? So, of course, this one is a negative 3. And is our degree or our exponent even or odd? 4 is an even number. So this is a negative even. So that puts us in this bracket right here. So when we look at x is approaching positive infinity, that means what's happening on the very right-hand side of this graph. And on the right-hand side of this graph, this graph goes down forever. So our answer here is negative infinity. Again, this here means right, the right-hand side of this graph. And this here means down. A lot of students get what these positives and negatives infinities mixed up. We're focusing on the right-hand side of the graph, and our answer is negative infinity because it goes down there. Same thing for part B. Our leading term is, of course, the same. 
It's, of course, still a negative even. When we look at x is approaching negative infinity, that's looking at the very left-hand side of the graph. If I look farther and farther out left on the graph, I also notice my graph goes down forever. So my answer here is also negative infinity. So again, one more time, this infinity here means left, and this negative infinity here means down. So the answer to both parts of this is negative infinity because my graph goes down forever on both extremes of my graph, both the right and the left-hand side. Now, this example was fairly easy because my polynomial was in typical polynomial form, or it was expanded. Let's go ahead and see another example of this. So here, I have 1 minus 4x times 9x squared plus 6. So I want to figure out what my leading term is. Now, this was a little bit more difficult because it's in factored form. So your first thought probably is, well, let's multiply it out to get it in expanded form. And that's a great first thought, and let's go ahead and do that. So I FOIL this out. 1 times 9x squared gives me a 9x squared. A 1 times 6 gives me a 6. Inside, negative 4x times 9x squared gives me a negative 36x to the third. And last, negative 4x times 6 gives me a negative 24x. Now, I can rearrange this in descending order and simplify it if you want to, but again, we're only focusing on the leading term, the highest exponent, and that is here negative 3x cubed. So everything else in this problem doesn't matter. Now, this is actually the long way to do this problem. You did not have to FOIL, and you did not have to multiply this out. All you had to do was focus on the leading term, because that's all we're doing is the leading term test. So to condense this, what I suggest that you do is ignore everything except for the leading term in each factor or each set of parentheses. In my first set of parentheses, my leading term is negative 4x. In my second set of parentheses, my leading term is 9x squared. So if I multiply this leading term times this leading term, because that's what this factoring is, is multiplication, that's going to give me my overall leading term. Now, if you foiled it out in this problem, it wasn't that big a deal. You didn't do that much extra work. But there will be other examples. If you want to expand them out completely, it's going to be a major task. So instead, just focus on the leading term of each factor and multiply all of those together. Now, this is a negative, negative 36, and my exponent is 3, so this is a negative odd. So that sees that I have this guy here. When I want to focus on x is approaching positive infinity, that's my right-hand side of my graph, and I see my graph goes down forever, so my answer here is negative infinity. Again, emphasizing here, I'm looking at the right-hand side, and my answer is negative infinity because it's going down. If I focus on x is approaching negative infinity, that's my left-hand side of my graph, and I see that my graph goes up forever there. So my answer there is positive infinity, or we can just write infinity. So again, this means my left-hand side of my graph, and this means it's going up forever. So I have my two answers to this function. I have one more example of infinite limits of polynomials. This is the limit as x is approaching both the positive and negative infinity of my function 3 minus x squared to the sixth power. I suggest you pause the video and see if you can work this out and figure out what the answers to this is on your own. Now this is what I was talking about in the previous example. We would not want to expand this polynomial out completely. Let me first tell you how to do it the incorrect way. You absolutely cannot distribute this sixth power. This is not equal to 3 to the 6 minus x squared to the 6th. 
that only gives you your um, first and last term of your polynomial. Okay, that is not the expanded polynomial here. The formal way to expand this is to take your 3 minus x squared and multiply that out six different times. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't even want to write this six different times, let alone multiply it out six different times. If we were to multiply this out completely, we'd have to FOIL two of these, FOIL my next two, FOIL my next two, then multiply those, then multiply those. And that would give us this ginormous polynomial. Now, we don't care about all of that information. All we care about is the leading term. So let's focus on just the leading term of this polynomial. So my highest exponent is my x squared, but it has this negative with it. And I want to take that to the sixth power. That's going to give me my overall leading term of this whole polynomial. So my leading term is negative x squared to the sixth power. If I take my negative six amount of times, negative times itself six times, an even amount of times gives me a positive. And if I take my x squared six amount of times, reviewing your exponent properties, I multiply these exponents here. So this gives me positive x to the 12th. So my leading term is a positive x to the 12th. Now the important part, it is positive and 12 is even. So this is a positive even, which means my graph looks like this. So I don't need all of this other information, okay? When I look at x's approaching positive infinity, that's the right-hand side of my graph, it's going up forever, so my answer here is positive infinity. Again, this means right, and this means up. When I look at my left-hand side of my graph, my graph is going up forever. So my answer there is positive infinity. So one more time, this means left and this means up. So both of these answers are positive infinity. So this summarizes how to find the infinite limits of polynomial functions. And really, it goes back to your leading term test. What does your end behavior look like? Is it positive or negative? Is it even or odd? You put all of that information together, review what the graph looks like, and that tells you what infinite limits both x approaching positive infinity and x approaching negative infinity is going to end up at. In the next video, we're going to review the end behavior of rational functions by looking at the graph. And then we're going to use that information to figure out the official way to find infinite limits of rational functions.